All right, in part one, we got the actual grip heaters underneath the grips and got the grips all put back together. That's done. Uh, now we've got to wire this. Uh, cable routing is going to be important here. Uh, I've put kind of a little bit of a, a bend in that one. It's a little tough to see. And it's not super far. I think if I kind of route up underneath here and maybe put it underneath this guy, I'll be good. Just when you're you're tying that down, just make sure you're clear. The last thing you want is for that to be rubbing on there. So see, it's too tight there. When I uh, when I zip tie it down, I'm going to have it uh, pushed, some extra wire pushed, so it's forced uh, to have enough slack to travel around that. Uh, same thing on this side. You know, take your time, get the wire routing as, as such that it's out of the way and not interfering with any of the controls. Uh, what are we going to wire it to? Well, we need to get uh, we need to get this headlight off uh, to get into the wiring underneath here. So uh, let me get some tools. We're going to have to pull out uh, this bolt and this bolt, and I think then it pulls out down here in the front. I don't think we have to take any fasteners out on the front. I think that pops into I think it pops into an O-ring there. Yeah, I think it pops in down there. That's good stuff. I've got this off. It's uh, this is just the two bolts, like I said. It's actually two plastic pins that go into O-rings down here. So once you get the bolts off, just you have to pry up, or not pry, but just pull up until it pops out of those. Um, I previously added this Dean's power connector here for my uh, GPS. This plugs into there. So I'm going to utilize this circuit, which ties into um, the headlight relay. And I'll link the video uh, down below of where to go. Actually, I'll try and link right to the spot of where I talk about that. But it's the it's the headlight relay circuit, and I think it's rated for, you know what, let me go find a sheet program for the, the bike. Uh, it's actually the turn signal relay that's back there on the back of the headlight. And let's see, we have ignition, ground, and load. So I believe I tapped on to ignition. I'm trying to read the colors. Uh, ignition comes back. You can trace that across. to D, turn signal stop, 10 amp. So we have 10 amps essentially on that lead coming into here. Um, we don't need anywhere near that much. Uh, we're 3.6 amps, 3.6 amps for both grips on high. The turn signals draw at most maybe an amp, amp and a half. Well, let's call it two amps. Um, to be safe. So let's see, five and a half amps, GPS draws an amp. So we're at maybe six and a half amps on a 10 amp circuit. We should be totally fine. Famous last words, right? So what I am going to do is I'm going to wire them both up on high to that circuit um, and just grab my forward looking infrared and make sure that nothing is heating up um, in an unsafe fashion uh, and kind of basically give it a load test. So that's what we're going to go do, but we are using, again, it's uh, on the wiring diagram, it's circuit D. If we trace it up the fuse, it comes down to uh, the ignition wire, which is, I'm trying to read the color there, it's super hard to see, maybe B, B, V, Y? I don't remember what that was when I tied into it, it's been a little while. Uh, but that's the one you want to tie into, you want to tie into it before it hits that turn signal uh, relay. So there we have it. I'm going to go wire that up and give it a test. All right, I think I got a better idea to fully test this. So I, I did kind of what I said I was going to do up here. I plugged into the power connector that I added earlier, and I just have both uh, grip warmers temporarily connected to that. Right now I have it on the, the low circuit. The bike's off, so it's not getting power. Um, the fuse box on the CRF450Ls is under the side plastic. And I love this. It says, uh, winker. Winker, stop. All right, wonderful. So that is the third fuse from the bottom. Well, first of all, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Um, make sure that there's not like a spare in another slot or something that's not marked. So we want the third from the bottom. 
third from the bottom. I'm not gonna be able to pull that out while I'm holding this, but we're gonna pull that fuse out. All right, so what I've done is I took a spare fuse, not the one out of the bike, just a one out of my collection, and broke it apart. So I got just the blades, and I pushed just the blades in with a needle nose pliers, and I'm going to basically put a multimeter in series here with that circuit so I can measure how much amperage we are actually drawing. So let me get that set up now. All right, I got that on there. A little hokey, but worst case scenario, if they were to touch together, the circuit just is completed by the, the short, essentially, and it's not fused for the short term, so not the end of the world. And ignition off, zero amps as expected. Let's go ignition on. Right now, I, uh, I disconnected that temporarily, so nothing's connected. And we've got six, seven milliamps. That's probably... Maybe the illumination or something on the the dash. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, very very low draw with just ignition on. Maybe the relay. Not sure. Uh, anyway, let's try turn signal. Okay, so around 0.4 amps. The other one. And let's see. Oh, worth noting, I did swap my signals for um, LED ones and degrade it into here. I don't remember what the original ones drew. Maybe a little bit more, but definitely not a lot. Um, let's try break. Okay, so what's our worst case scenario then with everything going at the same time? Let's put this on max. Put the signal on. And then apply the break. So that's our worst case scenario. That's with the brake on and the turn signal on, we are at 0.675. And I don't think, uh, this bike doesn't have hazards, right? We can't run both of those at the same time. But even if we could, we'd still be right around an amp total. Yeah, I'm not seeing it go any higher. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to rack my brain here thinking if there is a, anything that we would be doing that would be drawing more current than, than that. It does not look like it. I don't think there's even a way to have them both on at the same time. So we're probably limited to 0.676. Now my GPS was on there before. Let's actually plug that in and see what this draws with the GPS running as well. All right, GPS is booting. Looks like it's really minimal. Might go up a little bit as the illumination turns on. And it did. Right, so that's the GPS up and running. So less than 250 milliamps, a really tiny amount of current. Let's go ahead and actually do the signals again. Let's put it on max. Break. Okay, so with the GPS on, illumination on, holding the brake, turn signal on, we're still under one amp. Um, so I think it's safe to say you're, I, I don't remember what the original signals drew, but let's say it's safe to say you're under two amps. Uh, heck, even if you're under three amps, I mean, we're only going to draw, with both of the grip heaters on high, we're only going to draw um, another 3.6 amps, so call it four amps. So I mean, you've got quite a bit of amperage to play with here. Could you run another circuit all the way from the battery? Yeah, you could. Do you need to? No, it sure doesn't look like it. Um, again, see a maximum of one amp on this circuit with everything on, and it's a 10 amp circuit. All right, let's get those grip heaters on and see what kind of power we're drawing total. All right, there we are. It's the grip heaters on low. Not even feeling anything yet, but we're drawing 1.4 amps. Let's go ahead and put our turn signals back on. Break. Some X. So 
uh, we're just touching over two amps with the grip heaters on warm or on low, I should say, sorry, uh, and the brake light on and the signals on. I did have to disconnect the GPS, but so that's going to add another, let's call it uh, 2.3 amps total. All right, let's go ahead and put these guys on high and then start keeping an eye on the wires. Make sure everything is good. Be right back. All right, that is both grip warmers on high. That throttle side comes up to temperature fast. It's already pretty warm. This one's taking a, taking a little while to warm up. Uh, but we were drawing 2.7 amps. That's, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and put this on max again. Brake. Oh, signal's on first. 3.3 amps on high. With the brake on, with the signals on, we are nowhere near the limit for, for that circuit. Now, that said, um, the other thing I wanted to do here is make sure my wiring does not get too warm. Since I can't remember what gauge wire I used for this, um, I think we'd be fine with uh 20 gauge at this amperage uh given how short it is it's like six inches long um, but i think this might be 18 gauge but i'm gonna let this run actually i'm gonna connect the battery to a power source so we're not draining the battery and i'm gonna let this run a while and i'm gonna put the forward looking infrared on these wires and make sure they're not heated up so let me get something on this battery to keep it juiced got the forward looking infrared um, this has been running now for about 10 minutes. Let's take a look. So what we're looking at here before we use the forward looking infrared is, so this connector here is where we're drawing our power from. Um, to this side is just our temporary wire here. I'm more interested in uh, the back of the connector and the wire leaving the connector to make sure that's not warming up. So if we line up on that, let's see, it's a little tricky to see. Believe. Yeah, okay, that's the coupler. And that's the wire behind it. About 72 degrees. The ambient in here is more like 65, so it's just barely warming up there. With that, what's hot here is the headlight. That's the housing for the headlight. And when I say hot, it's relative. I mean, it's 114 degrees. Um, but that wire is not warming up at all. There is one wire that's feeding this whole area that has warmed up a little bit. Uh, but, you know, again, it's 77 degrees, 78 degrees. Definitely not hot. Um, it's probably going to discontinue to just dissipate that level of heat. I doubt it gets any warmer, but I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, the grips themselves... The clutch side is about 124 degrees, 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, these are on high. The throttle side is damn hot. Um, I kind of wish they still offered this kit with different, um, with different pieces per side because this side is, this is up to 180, 186 degrees now i don't have my hand on it that would be dissipating some of that heat but man this side is hot like it's uncomfortable to hold with a bare hand you see what it is around the other side yep, it's that it's the hottest up in that that front part but even here it's still hot 180 degrees um that is really hot um it's actually warming up the the throttle control next to it just from the heat radiating off of it and warming up the handguard on this side i wonder if you can see the oh yeah you can see the handguard you can see that some of the heat's dissipating into that handguard nothing wrong with that and you can see the heat dissipating down into the 
the uh, handlebar as well. That's actually, I kind of view that as a plus because uh, when everything's wet, it's going to keep that, that dried out. And it's not that hot. I mean, even back here, it's, it's 85 degrees. So we're certainly not in, not risking overheating anything. Okay, so at the hottest, that's like 120, 125 on that side. Whereas this side seems to be leveling off around one, 180, 184 is the hottest I've seen there. And we're drawing 2.71 amps. Uh, these wires should be heating up. That barely, you can tell the current's flowing through them, but not much. Let's check that wire again over here. Yeah, it's leveling off at 72 degrees. That guy, that's probably what feeds this circuit or what feeds the headlight. 76, 75, 76, yeah. So we're well within tolerance for, for everything here. I'm gonna let this run since we're running off. Uh, I hooked up my, my bench power supply just to keep the battery fed at the same rate that we're drawing current out of this. Um, I'm gonna leave this on a while and uh, and just see what happens. I'm gonna, when I say a while, I mean, I think I'm gonna leave this on for probably half an hour or an hour and come back, make sure everything is still good. All right, so it has been just about an hour. Let's check everything. So let's see, there's our connector. Wire coming around the back, 75 degrees. Our feed wire, just over 80 degrees. Let's check our grips. Okay, so that one has warmed up a bit more. I'm seeing 130, I think I saw 132 there somewhere. 132 degrees, yep. And this side, 185, 186, I think that's probably about where it's gonna top off. So it's a little disappointing uh, that, the, that the grips are such uneven temperatures. I've got an idea, because um, this, I, I tell you, uh, you know, let me set the, the forward-looking infrared down here. Uh, this one, even on high, with a bare hand, is not even remotely uncomfortable. I actually can't imagine running this one cooler than this, especially since it's like 65 here in my garage, so... You know, when you need it, I'm not, I'm never going to want less heat than that. But this one is roasting. Like I can't, to be fair, I'm not, I don't have a glove on, but I can't, I can't keep my hand on it. So I think what I might do is wire it so that this one is on high and this one is on low and see where we, see where we end up. Let me switch that around. All right. It is a whole day later because uh, life and work stuff. Um, I did try, I think uh, the last thing I had left off at as I was going to try having uh, this guy on low and this guy on high and see if it equaled out better. It didn't. Um, it ended up just being off the other direction. So I, it, there's a couple ways to solve that. I did look at like a pulse width modulated, like tiny motor controller. They make ones rated at two amps that are really not much bigger than uh, the end of my thumb. I actually ordered one just to screw with it. Uh, that would probably let me sort of tune um, the duty cycle to uh, either heating element um, to get them to, to match. And I may come back and address that again, although I might just be trying to solve a problem that's not really going to be a problem once I'm on the bike ride that either. So I'm going to go ahead and just wire it up um, as recommended with both on both uh, switched for low and both switched for high uh, for power. Uh, I settled on, I made myself a Y adapter, uh, a Dean's. 
the Dean's connector. So this, this end is a uh, single male and then it has two female on this end. So I can still plug my GPS in and the heated grips will plug into this one. I could have avoided the Y adapter and just uh, joined the wires to the, the GPS feed. But the reason I did this is if I'm out on the, like a multi-day ride and I run into a problem with either the GPS or with the heated grips, I can just open this up and I can unplug one or the, the other, still leaving, um, you know, one connected so that, uh, you know, I still have the GPS even though, even if I have an issue with the heated grips or, uh, or vice versa. So all that's really left to do at this point now is to trim and route these wires and get everything attached to the switch. I'm also not going to permanently mount the switch yet. Uh, I've got an opportunity, a three-day ride coming up. So I've got an opportunity to test all this before I kind of make anything permanent. So I'm going to just kind of have uh, the wires for the switch come up and terminate somewhere in an area, uh, you know, maybe up on the side or, or, or something where I can get to it. Uh, and there's enough slack so that I can come back later on and figure out where I want to permanently mount the switch if I don't want to make any changes to how it's set up. So, and I'll just heat shrink that off and position it so that water drains out um, if it were to get in there. So I'm going to start on that and I'll uh, come back and let you see where I landed. All right, so I got this wrapped up. And actually, I like my temporary solution so much, I might not even do anything else. So I took the, the button... And I used varying, or I should say, uh, decreasing sizes of heat shrink uh, to seal it up. And it's just a zip tied, three separate zip ties to give it some stability um, right on to that bunch of wires that's already coming up. So from the dash, I've kind of got that look there. And I can reach down and push that. It's actually quite solid uh, with one hand, um, which working out kind of better than I thought it would for a temporary solution. Um, so that might just stay there. I'm going to ride with it and see how much I like that. I kind of like it. It integrates into the dash pretty nice there. Um, on the wiring side, so there's three wires that go up to that switch. There's the hot and then essentially the hot out to either the, uh, the low or the high. And those three wires come here and you can see the, the hot is fed from uh, the aux circuit I already had in place. And the other two wires just feed either the the low, the white is the high, the blue is the low. I didn't I didn't slip the heat shrink down over there yet. And then the uh, the ground coming from my aux circuit just ties into the the reds from the heated grip. So all that's left to do now is to slip all the heat shrink down into place over the the leads. I've got to slip one over top of this since this one is actually going to be like that up in the bundle and then slip the larger piece of heat shrink down over the whole thing seal it up and then close this up and i am done so uh i'll show you what it looks like when i'm wrapped oh and here and test it make sure everything is working so not drawing anything key is off key on drawing just a couple milliamps from the gps let's see so low and high just as expected and off all right there we are all heat shrunk up see this end is the end that goes up to the switch and then this end is the power as well as the two leads that go to the actual hand warmers or grip heaters that warm my hands yes that all right, let me get this all closed up. All right, all done. Here's a view from the dash. See, it's pretty accessible. I think I might just keep that like that. I mean, that I can I can wiggle it around if I really try, but even with a gloved hand, I think I'll be able to whack that no problem. Well, that is the end of part two. Uh, part three will be a review of these guys. I'm, I'm hesitant to do that now because I haven't had an opportunity to actually ride with them yet. Um, the install was pretty good. Grips still feel nice and solid. 
So yeah, check back. Part three will be a review.